All right, well, good afternoon. I'm pleased to be uh, here at the gallery. I mean, I'm disappointed not to be with you, Rachel, in your, in your, uh, in your studio, your wonderful studio there in Oxford. Um, but here we're surrounded by the um, prints and the wonderful uh, colour, which is the, you know, the most striking thing, I, I guess, about your work. And they just really sort of leap out of the, like a summer's day. Um, what I wanted to start with, is first question, is just give people a chance to know a little bit more about you and, and how you came to this um, this project and and your your sort of origins as a printmaker. Oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> where to begin? Uh, I guess as a kid, I was always uh, the first to um, uh, ask to be given wax crayons, plasticine, felt tips. Um, I've loved colouring. I've loved drawing um, uh, all my life. <clears throat> Gradually, I thought I would do more with sculpture, being much more uh, physical and practical in, in my creativity. Um, but there was particularly one year I went to America and I was introduced to the most extraordinary prints that were huge on scale, huge in dynamism, and um, a lot were um, American abstract expressionists. And um, uh, although I, I wouldn't necessarily follow their philosophy, I loved the concept of, of, of bright, strong, bold um, print. And when I did my degree in Bristol, I chose to focus more on printmaking and really just mucked about uh, in the print room with the litho press that no one else was using and, and grew to try and understand lithography and then um, did my master's to kind of properly <laughs> work at what I was doing and, and how to work, work it. And, that is my passion. I love working in any form of print, <clears throat> any scale, but my, my favourite moment is when I'm working on a big machine and with big plates. George, should we look at your first, the first work we wanted to begin with? Mm. This is... Oh, that's the gallery. Here's the gallery, that's where we are now, near Godstone Lock. So what brought you to this new series of, of, of works, this, this river-themed uh, exhibition? Yeah, I think... For, for any series I do, uh, I don't know that there's an initial intent, but I am someone who is always looking and always drawing. And um, over time, living in Oxford, I'm, I've got two rivers beside me, the Cherwell and the Thames, and there's a lot of time <clears throat> I spent walking the dog, spent just sitting, enjoying um, the water. And I think this, uh, this image here, is one of the last I did for the series. And I think it does sum up what I was trying to, or what was happening as I was drawing, is, is to capture something really quite magnetic or quite magical um, about water, about the rivers. And um, with, this is a, a large lithograph, and with it to, to display something of movement, of shape, of little marks um, and bit by bit as I've been drawing um, I, I read quite a bit I love um, poetry and the, the, this, there seems to be so much about rivers and um, oh, uh, so many quotes uh, so much uh, rivers mean so much to different people I don't know uh, Isley said, if, 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 <clears throat> what is it? There's, if magic on this planet is, um, if, if there's magic in this planet, it's contained in water. And I love that. He's an anthropologist, but he just, yeah. there's something really, um, exciting about the way people talk about the importance of water. You know, was it Da Vinci? You know, <laughs> water is the driving force of nature. You know, there's something that, um, that's where I was chewing as I was drawing things. And then writing is very important to you, isn't it? I mean, the River Notes itself comes from a, from a book you read. Yes, yes, absolutely. Again, um, I stumbled, a, well, as I was pulling all these drawings together, I was thinking, ha, maybe this will become a show, maybe this will be a, a, a series. And I was thinking, do I call this River Studies, River Drawings? And I came across this book called River Notes. And I initially, all I did was I just loved that, that 
that title, River Notes, you know, the, the idea that it's jottings, words, um, images, also with that little remnant of, of rhythm, of sound. Mm, um, yes, music, yes. music. And uh, it was a, a book by uh, Barry Lopez, and um, it's very charming, very sweet. It's a, a book where he pretty much personifies um, a rock or a heron and or immerses himself on the riverbank and um, just captures what it is to just sit and look and watch and see what happens in nature. And um, so I, I kind of just plucked his title and, and it seemed to sum up the whole the whole series I've got here. Why have you chosen to open with, with near Godstow Lock? Uh, I think yes, I think it is because it has a bit of everything that I've I've been doing. Um, it's a familiar place. It's it's uh, Port Meadow, um, so it's the Thames. It I wanted to show something of the movement, movement within not only water but everything around on a river bank. Um, uh, time passing, but also the freshness, the freedom, the the joy of uh, being on a on a riverbank, and um, hopefully this, in a gentle way, catches catches that. And the, and the colour here, the, the, I love the, the the red in it. So it's one of what, as where, what, what's your sort of source of colour and your thoughts on colour? I mean, it's a particular place. Is there a particular plant that you've seen there? Uh, yes, there. Uh, yes, it, it, it. Yes, and I. I wouldn't know the the, the name of it, but yes, there was um, a plant that had something of that warmth, the kind of the the gentle turning burgundy that um, of of leaves just tipping toward the end of the of the summer. You know, yes, just kind yes. of um, gentle change. Um, and the drawing. I mean, should we go on to to another? Sure, go ahead. So I wanted to talk about a little bit more about drawing um, and how the the, the form. And, well, I, see, I love that the heron here in, in this one because bird, I mean birds are quite important to you as well, aren't they? In the animal sort of life, even they don't appear in many of the works. That that's very important as well, isn't it? Yes, yes, it it, it is. I think uh, yes. I don't necessarily put too much. Um, it, there's a there's an artist called Annabelle Gault. Um, she's a beautiful, beautiful painter, and she has this wonderful interplay in her paintings between depiction and abstraction. And it's just that they're often of her garden, very simple scenes, but they they bring in something that's very sympathetic to nature. And I I think with these these images I wanted to, uh, sometimes I want to depict very specific moments, things I've seen, and other times just pull them, pull them apart a bit to kind of um, loosen the, the tightness. The, the one on the right, Thames 2 with the heron, I think this all came about because there is a heron. <laughs> uh, this series, the Thames, um, began during uh, the season of lockdown, we weren't allowed to stop, but we could exercise. And I would walk to um, th across Port Meadow regularly with the dog, always be drawing, always be looking. And actually, in the past, I've drawn Port Meadow a lot. And the heron seemed to symbolise massively how we are and how we were, f f were, or maybe still are, are, were feeling of that isolation and that um almost time standing still um and yeah I, I feel like you almost as the heron you sort of on the bank sort of still watching do you move a lot or do you stay still and to draw or is, are you a sort of moving drawer um i a bit of both i think lockdown we had to just keep moving but um no i do love to sit and draw yeah, and, and just watch. A there's a lot of looking goes on um, before I'm drawing. Um, but yeah, and um, I guess, you know, the Barry Lopez, the um, River Notes, he he also talks about the heron, you know, you retreat yeah. 
silent as winter trees, you know, and all of that, the picture of, um, uh, well, including the sound, you know, so while I'm sitting, it's it's a, a lot of listening as, as much as, as watching and, and looking. Because uh, many of the artists, landscape artists that I'm interested in, like Paul Nash and Eric Revilius, they often have sort of landscapes, an English landscape, which is empty of people. And you sort of follow that as well. Because I mean, as you said, a lot of these places are, there are people there moving around as well. Do you think that's a sort of, a sort of the isolation of the artist, that, that desire not to have the intrusion of, of human form? <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, interesting. I, um, I've i loved life drawing. I love people. I, I think I am more absorbed in reflecting the, uh, the mood of a place to represent a moment for people, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, In that for, for me, I think this stirs up a lot of my memories of various people, things I've seen, people, voices I've heard in the water, not in the water. Um, I think it's a very different thing to put figures in. It would, yes. uh, it would draw a different dimension that, that uh, as yet, I'm, I've not included. Right, yeah. Should we go on to... Mm. Now these ones, uh, we've got some, I don't think we've got these ones behind us quite, but this, yeah, uh, the, the sort of the pinks in here and the colour I just think is wonderful. Yeah. Is, is that a sort of, is it sort of difficult to ask, but sort of again about sort of colour, but how does, how does colour play in your, in, in development of, of your work? I mean, the colours that you choose for, uh, I, I'm not a printmaker, so I mean, I don't. Do you have a huge range of colours that you can potentially draw upon that you particularly select? Yeah, I, oh, well, it's interesting. I think the um, yeah, when I look at these, I, I kind of think, oh, well, this is just what I saw. You know, I kind of feel actually, I don't know that that they are an interpretation because actually, I really do feel, you know, Thames Four um the, the light can be uh like this that there, there is this kind of weird moment where as seasons change where the uh, colors are tinted and um but they also i also use them to symbolize moments so Thames four is you know quite much more about a bit of a ch linked with lockdown a chink of a moment of freedom there's this, this kind of like optimism and then Thames five certainly is um, come June when we were out and about and um, there's just vibrancy and there's no stopping nature from just displaying mad, mad extreme colour. Um, so so I would say sometimes I will, it, yeah, some images later you'll see I, I do exaggerate a colour, but I think uh, for these particular series, I think I really was trying to display how we were feeling and use, use the colours of nature to represent that. And does it, did you feel sort of optimistic when making the painting? So that it was something we could, we were going to sort of, we were getting through and here, here was nature as this source of comfort and life? Oh, I, th I think so. I think so. I mean, I think that's, well, I just, I, I really do sense all of us made a, a beeline for water, wherever it was. Um, to to find uh, comfort, reassurance that you know, there's movement, there's uh, a relentless energy where we were being stopped from various things. Water paid no attention, and um, where we're blessed to have water, you know, it's it's a it's a massive um, the, the vitality gives us great energy, I think, and um, and also rest, and I. I just was seeing more and more people were drawn to swimming, paddleboarding, whatever it was. You know, we've all yes. gone mad for water now, uh, like as if we'd woken up to how uh, brilliant it is and how important it is for us. Well, it is one of the wonderful things in Oxford, isn't it, particularly? I mean, as you say, the two rivers, the, the ponds, everything is 
um, uh, alive in, in that landscape. Well, one of the things uh, that's interested me about what you said about your sort of origins has been both um, what you said about sculpture and then about attempting to sort of create movement in, in your printmaking. How, how, how's, how's that played a part in what you've done? Yeah, I think um, this this collection was is very different and it, it, interesting to do. It's a whole new area. It was down at Helford. I, uh, my family we went twice two summers, and it's fair. And already I was quite immersed in okay rivers. You know, let's look at these things. And um, it it was so sh striking down there the of the the vibrancy and the the dramatic. Um, power that was going along down Helford and the estuary and the different um, power, different power of the water there. And I think with these, this racing pink, um, I was trying to catch, again, the pink is the, is the mud. It was so pink, but it felt almost like the mud was moving too. You know, it had that kind of um, aggressive pull. Uh, that I really liked, and I think it helped me uh, be much more selective of too much detail and um, uh, intricacy because it was just big and bold and um, really quite quite exciting down there. And that was in Cornwall. Yes, yes. And that's a place you go to have been to regularly. Is that or was that was a sort of a, a, a new experience? That was a, a new experience. Uh, Cornwall's very familiar, but the Helford estuary was new. Mm. Where, where is that? I don't. I don't know that part of Cornwall. It's down um, south, definitely south. Not at the tip, but um, the Lizard Peninsula. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it was a long drive. <laughs> and these are on different sort of scale, aren't they? I mean, it's always tricky with um, seeing things on the screen, the sort of the different size of the works. Because some of those works quite small, then some of it's really quite large, isn't it? I mean, how do you decide what's going to be your sort of scale of work? Was there a particular reason for a sort of smaller scale here with um, Helford, or was it? Um, yeah. Yes, I yes. Generally, I find it hard to answer that. Um, with the with the Thames series, I was without my um, plates. I couldn't get hold of them, so I had to work to this scale, quite a small square, because of the um, the relief print that I was doing. These um, Helford series again. I I still couldn't get hold of my plates, but I did have some aluminium plates still lithography, but it was a different um, uh, medium. And they were um, this size, they were the, the Helford print size. So I worked to scale of the plate. Um, and actually I've, they were terrific because they are just that little bit wider. So they kind of give just an edge of a panoramic view of, of, of Helford. Um, but in answer to your question, I think I do small initially because they they flow on from my sketches to small studies and then gradually I grow in confidence and just think I know exactly what I want to do and then I do very large. Yes, because you have this fantastic print uh, press in your studio there, don't you? I do, yeah. It's enormous. <laughs> it is. It is a, a man direct press. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, no, it's a very big beast. <laughs> and you enjoy that physical side of printmaking, you've said before, that there's sort of the, the effort, the physical effort that goes into it. Yes, definitely. It's, it's not about sort of um, uh, acids or uh, anything. It just is, is it's a, yes, it, it, it is entirely about drawing on a plate and then a few processes later, rolling, rolling ink over the plate and uh, and then printing it in on a grand scale it's it's i'm totally involved in it and it's really really satisfying on a good day <laughs> one of the things that interests me is that when talking to artists is that question of, of sort of why why a printmaker rather than a painter what what's the difference would you say between printing this uh, as a lithograph as opposed to paint painting it or using one of your you know um, working from one of your sketches into into uh, a painted picture. 
Or, oh, do you know, that's a really good question. And on really bad days, I do ask myself that regularly. I think, um, I, I think I, it is a way I work. I think I, I don't feel a painter. I don't feel anything is finished as a painting. I feel just me and a brush. I suddenly have to use crayons and cut bits out and collage. I, I, I can't, um, resolve things, I don't think, just with me and my paint pot. Um, and there is something really exciting about pulling an image apart and thinking, right, let's work one layer at a time, one colour at a time. Again, maybe this works with my 3D <laughs> feel. Um, and with printmaking, particularly lithography, I can do one colour and then work on another plate and then it's the next color and I have time between to kind of just see what's going to pull what's going to fight whether something needs solid mass in front or a, a gesture of a mark and um, with with a direct press you're working in reverse as well so in a weird way I love that I love there's a, an edge of unpredictability about what what is going to come of, of what I'm I'm playing with. So I have I feel very much under control of what I'm doing. And yet at the same time, the print itself will also barge in and and <laughs> display yeah. something else. Yeah. And I think that uh, it's very exciting, therefore. So you go through the, the labor of the process but for the excitement of something else happening that you hadn't intended. Yeah, the sort of sense of chance and the unexpected. Yes, that's my impression from other print printmakers. I've encountered. Should we move on to? So this is the same series, the same river, um, but sort of a, a, a different moment, a different part of the river. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, it was um, uh, that was quite a damp old day. But that this is called Mirabeau Bend, and I'm not a Formula One fan, but I do know in Monaco there is this mad bend. Um, that screeches around the city, and um, I don't know. It's an, a word I've just clocked and remembered and I just saw this river and this and I just thought gosh this is so mad it is like Formula One again just trying to catch that um damp sogginess almost dull light but also the carving out of that river and what it leaves and and to kind of um <laughs> cr create the, the the bend you know yes yes so it is a different, obviously, obviously, very different landscape to in Cornwall to what, what we have in Oxford, and different sort of sense of what water and a river can do and what it can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we yeah. Keep moving, move on. And similarly with this, you know, um, this is called reflecting color, and it's it, it is what it says on the packet in a way. It was just like this mirror absolute mirror image of, of what was around you know and that the darks are so dark there you know the um the banks are really high and yeah. uh, uh uh it was yeah that again that day a very simple calm pretty pretty day but um very huge depth huge depth in that water and then there's a third series isn't there or third set in the um in the same series we, is there another is that the that's the that that's another one from um memory of a summer moon this is uh yeah that a last uh, one of the last ones of that the helford ones and i um yeah this i think memory of a summer moon is a, a line from a, a beautiful poem called fading away uh by evelyn judy bueller and uh, it, she just writes beautifully about uh, time and time passing and um, it's very genteel how she writes and I, I liked her phraseology and I just thought there is this um, drama, you know, definitely Daphne du Maurier, drama down uh, in, down in um, Frenchman's yeah. Creek and all that, but yeah. there is also this beautiful um, um, is it like almost honouring of, of nature? There's something very kind of um, majestic um, in that estuary, very still, because it, it's so powerful, but it's also very um, uh, serene. 
uh, powerfully serene. I, I can't describe it really, but this was um, <laughs> trying to catch that. I think you're the sort of the most literary of the artists I've interviewed. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> references to books and poems and things. I mean, is that is that something that's going on sort of all the time with you reading? I mean, would it would would that read it? Does the sort of the title come after the work, or does do you think what what's what you're reading at the time influences the way you're looking and working? Uh, a blend of those, I'd say. Um, so this would have been done. But then I'll recall, you know, some, some like Racing Pink, I wanted to call it Racing Pink immediately. You know, that, that, that was where I was at when I did the drawing. I was just like, oh, I know what this is. Whereas this one took time to kind of gauge, to try and find the, the phrase. But it is, yeah, it, it, it is all in part and parcel of life, isn't it? What we hear, music we listen to, um, what we read, and something triggers and you think, oh, that's lovely. I'll, how can I pull that in? Yes, mm. yes. Have we got a... Okay, the press. Oh, here's the press. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, my lovely press. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this is me, my happiest. Yeah. When you're printing, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then this, this is a, this is a, a, a different series, isn't it? So we, I think you, you say we, you got well. There's four particular sort of uh, ideas, rivers you have through across the course of this exhibition. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. So these, these are, um, these were done toward the end. Well, the, the, I mean, it's taken a while. Um, so I did all the small, all the small, and then loads of drawing. And then gradually, I just think, right, uh, what am I going to do with these? And I know, I, I can't wait to, to, to go large really on, on these plates yeah. so ground walk same old same old spot always the same walk i do in university parks but there is this area of trees that just is well through all the chowell edition you'll see i i'm so familiar with the trees some of them have been lopped masses of them have been lopped yeah. Yeah. Um, but um i think this is where i feel really excited and as i mentioned before with um I love, uh, I can't remember, uh, Calder's mobiles. I love yes. that sense of shape, movement, um, you know, with balance and counterbalance with his mobiles. And um, I love trying to do that uh, two dimensionally with the shapes that I see and the color and play with color. So the ground water, you know, having blue in the water, yellow above, you know, in reverse to what it should be and just, just playing and seeing if I could create the, the 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 essence of the mood of the place just with the with simple simple marks some strong some very kind of um, fragile. Um, these are sort of the most sort of almost abstract of the series, aren't they? Yes. Have yeah. you ever moved entirely to abstraction, or do you think you will stay as a sort of inspired by landscape artist? Yeah, I think they will always have a source. I think early days, uh, my 20s, uh, things were a lot more abstract, but they'll have always had a an origin. Um, I can't not do that somehow. I think my sketchbooks kind of display um, <laughs> dual things go going on of exactly what was there and then me unpicking it. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, uh, and then up at, up at Sunny. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Rachel. I was going to say, um, up at Sunnymead, um, this is that is nearer to where we live up here. And um I just was very um in the mood to, to really push and play with um marks and mark making um it's a classic artistic term mark making yeah. um but i but it but i did i wanted to see what what i could play with the contrast of the land and the contrast of the water and to see them complement each other slightly musically um and then also be opposed to one another um 
I think there's just so much fun doing, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know, you kind of lose track really whether they're working or not, but it's just something that just has to be done. And I, yeah, um, get quite immersed then in the print and leave the original drawing behind. I push on further. Well, I mean, I think these do work. I mean, I think they're absolutely wonderful. I mean, these two are actually two of my, my favourites of the, of the whole show. Yeah. Something I mentioned, uh, um, Terry Frost was an, is an artist I'm, I'm quite fond of, and I felt something sort of of him in these. And he lived in Cornwall. I mean, obviously, this is Oxford still, but um, he had a sort of sense of, a, of the love of, of water and very strong colour. Uh, is, is that a sort of period of British art that you've, you've been drawn to? I imagine I have. I think, um, rudely, I'd say, um, not deliberately, but I think I just have imbibed. Uh, you know, I know that I am from a tradition of British artists, you know, that that is in blood and in my, yep. you know, uh, yes, I'd say def I'd say definitely, um, but not deliberately. Not deliberately. No, that would be sort of my last question I wanted to ask really was, I mean, it's a very difficult one of, do, and I know one of your last series was of, um, from California. I mean, do you, but do you sort of feel yourself as a, a British artist particularly? And do you think one can see a sort of Britishness in uh, British landscape uh, tradition? Ah, nice. Um, yeah, I think it was a surprise that I did a series on the Pacific coast. Uh, surprise to me, I never intended all my drawings to have, have um, created a, a, a show, but they got under my skin and I, and, and there was something I wanted to do with them. And um, so up until that point, it had always been British English landscape. Absolutely. I tried when I was about 30, um, I went to Australia and friends said, come live with us, be here for a year, do a residency. And I went and it was magnificent and I had a lovely, lovely time. But after six weeks and having bought a whole new range of colours, I thought I wanted to return home because it was too bright. It was so strong that I, I just couldn't get comfortable. And I remember um, I was picked up by my dad and um, it was, it was February and it was really bleak, foggy, awful, awful weather. He picked me up and he said, I'm so sorry about this weather. And I looked out the window and I said, oh, dad, this is beautiful. And I absolutely loved all the grey. So it's, yeah, I, I love this country. Although I'll do a residency anywhere. <laughs> I would be interested. Did, 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 did anything come of, uh, did you make Australian work? Is, is, are no. there any Australian, there aren't, no. But I did a series, uh, I was based in London at the time, and I did do some very big um, images based on uh, Wimbledon Common. Um, and I think the, the drama, I was, I was energised to do something more with the drama of, of the trees that were in this country um, from it, I suppose. From, well, from having been away and then come, yeah. coming back. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's always the thing, isn't it? Seeing someone new, but then coming back to the old. Yeah. And seeing it maybe in a slightly different way. Well, thank, thank you very much, Rachel. It's been wonderful talking. And I, oh, there's a couple more. Yeah, no, no, oh, yeah, no, there's one more series. Yes, there is. Well, there is. Should we go on to um, Rubato Flow? Yes. So this is the last one. Uh, I know this is obviously a very um, emotional subject, but uh, do you want to sort of explain where this uh, particular series had uh, originated? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes. Um, I, uh, last December, Find myself, I was I had to drop off a, a daughter somewhere and wait for a day near the River Star. So I just thought I will go and draw and um, see what I see. It was December and just had the whole day to draw different stages of that river. And um, I'm not attached to it in any way, but it was fascinating to watch the, the changes of the course of the river. And I brought it back and I thought, well, I'll do something with it. And actually, as I was working, I realized that it, it was quite symbolic, quite um, beautiful, how it uh, could represent not only the course of the river, but slightly the course of, of life. And I, I was chewing over this idea of the term rubato and rubato in, in music, um, 
is when you in in the piece of music between the beginning and the end it has to be a certain amount of time but within that you can take possession of whether it goes faster slower brighter darker whatever you know this this is that right you know that if that's a good description and i thought rubato flow is a very um lovely combination of words to not only describe merely this river but also our course of life and yeah. in a way my my dear dad he was been very poorly and 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 has died and um it was a means for me to kind of just pull together something of how he seized life like he there was a beginning to his life and an end to his life but within that life he really um took hold of it and displayed um just magnificence in in how he lived and how he uh cared for us all and uh I, it's it's so it's personal in that um it's in slightly in memory of him but it yeah. is it it is a sort of picture of of life itself for us you know like, yeah um and you bound these together into a book i have i've sewn them together yes so they are uh there's a series that are uh, sold as individual pieces but also as as books mm. and that's a sort of, that's a limited edition of, of of books yes yeah yeah hand sewn by by you yes <laughs> so there are some wobbly bits certainly <laughs> well, shall we see uh, thank you thank you rachel I mean, thank you. I'm going to pop on here now. I think possibly there are no questions because there, it was such an informative discussion. I certainly learned a lot from both of you um, today and I thought it was, I felt really privileged to listen to both of you talking. I might add this photograph at the end is us at um, the private view here in the gallery, uh, which was such a happy, happy day. Um, the exhibition is on until the 10th of October, so if you are able to come and see it here in Woodstock, do come and see it. And there is also a fabulous um, catalogue available. Um, if you haven't got one, do get in touch with the um, email below, and um, David has kindly written the introduction to the catalogue. So, um, um, Rachel, I do hope you feel better. Yes. I think you've done brilliantly. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Not too much spluttering. No, it was it was fantastic. And thank you, David, for Hello. coming over here as well and being with me in the gallery and giving your time for this. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And um, uh, that was really wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure.